guys, this is Jay. Thanks for joining me on my YouTube channel. Um, today I'm going to be working on a um, new print of Sailor Jupiter from the hit anime series Sailor Moon. Um, Jupiter controls lightning, so I'm going to be incorporating a lot of lightning, a lot of blues, a lot of darks. Um, I'm not going to talk too much through this one. It's pretty basic. The overall piece took me about three hours to finish. Um, I can only record in like 20 minute intervals, so please pardon any shaky with the camera because it's all on my cell phone and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. This one I did draw entirely um, in pencil on the Fabriano Bristol Plus Plus paper, and I inked it with the Pigma Micron pens using the 01 pen, which is not to be confused with the Graphic One. Marker. Later I do use the graphic one to kind of get some more intense blacks on the page, but I just paid a lot of attention to the details in the boots and all over the piece kind of, and I add in this huge stroke of lightning, um, which is going to be coming across the page and kind of brightening every, lightening everything up from the bottom left of the corner of the piece um, and around on the bottom. I'm also going to have some lightning kind of curving around her hands. So one of the things that I've done here with the initial sketch as compa um, compared to the inking is that I just did a really loose sketch. I got a lot of the features in that I wanted, but I didn't put a ton of detail in with the pencil work um, because I didn't want to have difficulty erasing it. But from time to time, even though I do like to use transfer paper to make this stuff look a little bit better and just feel better, transfer better, be a little bit cleaner, I do like to draw a pencil on the paper so that I get that commission feel. So when I'm trying to really, you know, kick some stuff out and time myself, get used to how long something will take me to draw on paper, I do like to kind of have that type of experience so that when I tell you guys at a convention, oh, it's going to take me this many hours, I actually have some kind of idea about how long it's going to take. So this piece was really detailed. It took me um, about half of the amount of time of the entire piece to ink it. Um, it took me only about a half an hour to sketch it. So I guess three and a half hours is about what this would take me. Um, if I were doing this one as a commission, this would have been an $85 piece because of the level of detail. And I'm saying $85 because that's, that's what it is today in 2014. But um, so right now I'm going through and I'm adding in all this extra electricity around her arms and if you look closely at the sketch, I'm not sure if you can see it very clearly on YouTube, you can see I haven't drawn in her hands in detail even with the pencils. What I'm doing is I'm waiting to get all this ink on the page and then I'm going to erase the pencil lines and I'm going to fill in what parts of the hands you're actually going to see. I did this so that I didn't spend a lot of time trying to get very nitpicky on the hands and the way that, you know, the fingers, you know, overlap and curve and everything else because if I put all that detail into the sketch, one, it's probably going to get harder to erase, so I want to minimize any types of errors that could happen or any um, residual graphite um, or indentations that get stuck on the paper because I have a very heavy hand. Um, I wanted to make it a little bit easier on myself in the inking phase as well. It also allowed me to be a little bit looser with some of the lightning so that I wasn't as afraid to cover up the hands because I really wanted it to look intertwined. Um, so that's kind of why I didn't draw them in just yet. I knew that I wanted to have them in there. I'm not trying to hide them. I never try to hide hands. I like hands. Uh, but I wanted to spend a lot of attention to the lightning and making the piece look very free and um, with a lot of details that I go back and add in on the hands later. So the version of Sailor Jupiter that I'm doing, she's kind of the tomboy, so she's got the ponytail going on, and I'm doing the original version of her. I wanted to do the original versions, and then if the series, the new reboot series that's going on right now, um, continues the same path as the Sailor Moon franchise did back in the 90s, I might end up doing the Eternal set later. Uh, maybe just a picture of all of them together. Uh, would be kind of nice, but for right now I'm just focusing on individual prints. Jupiter is actually my most requested one, followed by Saturn, so I'll be working on Saturn next. Um, when it comes to the detail in the skirt, <laughs> it's very, very short, because why not? And because it's Sailor Moon, so of course it's not Sailor Moon unless you have really short skirts. Um, just getting all of kind of the ripples on the skirt is really important, so I paid a lot of attention to detail to that too. And then, of course, the pink bow. Even though you can barely see it, it's really important to have it at least there so that it doesn't look amiss. And then I'm finishing up some of the lightning up at the top. Okay. 
getting a lot of the detail in around the hair and the face without tr distracting is a little difficult, especially because it's so small. I still want it to have that sailor flap feel, even though her arms are up, so it kind of makes her collar kind of bunch um, between her neck and her arms. So I had to pay close attention to that to make sure that it still looked like a sailor suit even though, you know, it's posed a little bit differently. So I'm erasing everything with a very soft um, Statler eraser and then I'm using a brush to brush away any of the um, eraser trails. And now I'm going back over where I want the hands to be and I'm drawing those back in in pencil and then I'll be inking them again. Like I said, all of the inking took me about an hour and a half to do. Um, it took me a substantial amount of time to get it the way that I wanted it to be, and that's just because, you know, it was very detailed. I'm, I'm using a 005 uh, Micron pen on the hands because I want them to look very delicate. Later on in the piece, you'll see me go back over it with a graphic one when I'm cleaning everything up because you really couldn't tell the difference between the hands and the electricity. Um, that's around her once I started adding a lot of the color in it just kind of felt a little flat so I made a little bit more dynamic and defined her body a little bit more so that she was kind of popping out from the background a little bit and then of course erasing away all that other stuff and brushing it off so you notice that I'm also still using my artist tape. That allows me to keep the piece secured. Um, when I'm at a convention, I do like to kind of rotate my piece around a little bit, but for the sake of filming, it's just easier if I have it taped down. Um, it also gives me a good idea of what my margins are. So now I'm going through and I'm adding in all of these action lines that are coming from this lightning crackle, kind of adding in any of the hues, and now I'm adding in a lot of the color. So I'm using this Mint Zero uh, B01, which is a very light blue. It kind of has an electric blue feel to it. That's why I'm kind of using it, and I like the way it looks. I've been using it on a lot of pieces lately. It's one of my favorite colors. So I'm just kind of highlighting it. I know that I predominantly want this to be um, white, but um, the lightning, I want the lightning to be white, but I'm just lightening it up with all of this uh, B01 so that it kind of has a little bit of a glow to it, because if it was just white, it would kind of be boring. I'm also adding the blue to her hair, and you'll notice that I stop. I don't continue shading her hair. This is because I'm going to use the technique called dry shading, um, t so that I can preserve some of that blue luminosity, but I can also have the brown of the hair, you know, striking against the blue. I'm adding in some more of the... Uh, with the B01, some of the blue tones, and most of these end up getting lost later in the piece. And I'm also adding some reflectiveness on her clothing so that she looks a little bit more in the environment. And I'm going to spend a lot of time coloring her skin. I use the E00 Skin White and the Fruit Pink, which is E02 in the Copic Marker series. And one of the things, nice things about Copic Markers, and if you listen to any of my other videos or you join me on my live stream, you'll hear me talk about this a lot, Copic markers have an alcohol base in them, which allows them to blend whenever they're wet. So for example, you'll see me quickly switching between markers here and there on the skin tones and blending this E00 with the E02. Because the Copic has the alcohol and because I'm applying the E02 immediately after the E00, it's allowing me to blend these two together, which creates a very soft, almost hazy look when the two colors meet. Um, whereas a lot of markers don't do that at all. Now Copic also has something called dry shading and I'm going to be doing a lot of dry shading in this uh, with this piece of artwork. So that's kind of the only reason that I'm really doing um, a voiceover on this is so that you can kind of see the difference and I can talk about where it is. So the skin tones I'm using entirely wet shading where I'm applying the color repeatedly after itself. Um, to make it darker. And you'll see that again with this yellow and this green that I'm adding to the skirt, um, this is an example of wet shading. I'm working very fast. I'm immediately layering the green on top of the yellow so that the alcohol will allow these two colors to blend together. Whereas you notice that I haven't touched that blue on her hair yet and that's because I want the brown to be much more striking so I'm going to be using a dry shading on that instead. So this entire skirt is being done for the most part right now with wet shading between these greens and these yellows um, to really get 
um, this just kind of softer look. It creates a more gradient effect. I'm using a uh, yellow green. I used a yellow 11. I used the lettuce green, I think Nile green, and I used a couple other dark greens. Malachite, I think, is the base green for this. Whenever you're shading a skirt, it's very important to be kind of mindful of the rise and fall and any cloth that you would see on the underside of the skirt, especially with Sailor Moon and a lot of anime. You get to see a lot of the underskirts. And now I'm using a uh, blue-violet to darken some of those shadows up a little bit more. You don't even see the purple on the finished piece. The eye just kind of blends it together. Um, so it's just kind of an added benefit. It darkens the green. It gives it a little bit more depth. Whereas if you're just using green on green on green, you're shading within that same tonality and it's just getting darker and darker and darker. It tends to have a slightly flatter feel as opposed to adding a little bit of purple to it. So you notice I'm adding this pink and I'm kind of leaving some of this pink alone and then I'm adding in this pink immediately. I'm coloring pink and adding pink on it immediately. I'm using the wet shading. Um, this again I like to use for cloth because I think it gives it a really soft feel and predominantly cloths are, you know, clothing is pretty soft so it works. Um, you'll see that I touch the paper from time to time. That's me checking to see if it's still wet because I'm adding in the very darkest pink that I want to add and what I'm doing is I'm checking to see if it's still wet or not because when I add this darker pink I want it to be dry so that the darker pink is very striking and even though I'm using the brush tip which does allow blending a little bit better it's just allowing me to get a little bit more detail and still have those brush strokes on it versus having you know a very blocky marker if I use the marker end of the Copic. So I used a little bit of a mixture of the dry and wet shading on the bow as well as the skirt in order to get a little bit more contrast. And here I'm going back over some of the shadows on the skirt again with that dry shading. I'm fixing up her cuffs in the same way that I did the skirt, focusing on wet shading entirely. At this point it's not going to make too much of a difference if I do dry shading in addition to that because it's such a small area. And now that the collar area is dry, I can go back over it with those darker colors, darker hues, and really make it look right. The gem is done entirely with wet shading and I use the um, colorless blender, which is a zero, in order to just kind of make it a little bit hazier. I went through and added some blue green 10 and some BV00 which is mauve shadow. They're both colors that I like to use for shadow. I added them both in um, around her torso to kind of give her sailor scout uniform which is white just a little bit more depth. I didn't really do this too much up on the gloves because there's so much going on up there. I didn't want to add to the detail of it. Um, it's already busy enough. Now one of the tricky parts about this piece was the kind of explosion that's going on in the bottom left that crosses her body. One of the ways that I did the Lena inverse piece, which has a similar effect with Lena casting a dragon slave, is I went back and I added some very um, blotchy looking acrylic paint over the top of my inks and color in order to get a brighter white out of that uh, ball of light. This one I wanted to try and incorporate more blues and if I was going to go back and add white I could end up taking away from the blue electric hue. So I had to be pay a lot of attention to that and just kind of avoid some of those light arrays that are kind of coming in front of her. So it made it a little bit tricky especially when shading the skin. Here I'm adding in the different browns. You'll notice that I'm kind of going over the blue a little bit with that dry shading and the brown really doesn't blend well with the blue and that's okay at this point. Once I start adding in more of the atmosphere, it's really going to pull this piece together. So I'm just gradually darkening her hair up with sand, um, dark suntan, and again the copper. It's like my favorite color um, trifecta for brown hair. I think her hair was actually a little bit lighter, but given all the different types of lightings that's, you know, kind of happening in this picture, I'm okay with it being a little bit darker. She's also the only brunette that I'm going to have in the entire, entire Sailor Scout set, so um, I didn't want to give her too light of hair because then I think she'd start kind of looking like uh, just too blonde. 
adding in her lipstick. I like to use the almond pink, the cotton candy, um, go over it with some just regular old pink and the begonia pink as well for some of the darker parts. Um, the top lip I do with dry shading, which is the darkest pink that I'm going to use. And then I primarily use wet shading up until I get to the corners of the mouth. Then I like to just get a little bit of that dry shading in there to make it a little bit crisper. So I turn the next part of this video up to like, I think, 2000% speed. So you're going to see me moving kind of at the speed of light in a second because I didn't want to waste a lot of time with me coloring around all these um, parts because this is very, 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 very boring. So um, right now I'm using Prussian blue and I'm darkening the entire background. Uh, it, it took a good while. I t think it took about 35, 45 minutes, something like that, to get the entire background in, mainly because there were so many angles that I had to worry about. I have the glow coming from her hands, I have the glow coming from this strike of lightning, and then I have where the lightning's hitting the ground and exploding outward, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't take away from any of that, but I also had to make it look like all of these elements are kind of together rather than going all over the place because as I was working on it, I realized it looked like it was going all over the place and I ended up having to make some adjustments. So I had to be really loose with my design and very um, attentive to what I was doing so that I didn't accidentally, you know, color blue over her legs or something like that. Um, that would have been very bad <laughs> and I would have had to start all over. Maybe I should have started with the gigantic blue background and then added her in. Uh, but I think that would have messed with my eye when I went to color her skin or something, so... Anyways, just adding a lot of blue on the page. I'm probably going to have to buy a new marker soon because I'm pretty sure this is going to kill it. So talking a little bit more about what I did with the hair and the wet and dry shading um, that Copic lets you do. The, all of the browns were done with wet shading, so they all blended together very nicely and you got a nice sheen out of them. Whereas the blue was done with the dry shading, so it has this very striking contrast, not just because it's a lighter color, but because it was shaded differently than the other sets. Um, you can also tell that I'm going back over a lot of different parts after they've already dried with this background because I didn't want them to blend together. I wanted there to be a lot of very um, striking, jagged edges with the brushwork. Um, so you see me going back and forth from the bottom to the top to the right, and I'm kind of working in a circle. I'm doing this so that it balances out, and I'm not putting too much attention just on the bottom left or on the bottom right. So this is all about, at this point, color balance and being very careful about not coloring over the character where I spent a lot of time putting in a lot of detail. I used the uh, flesh color to go back over some parts of her skin and just darken up a couple of items uh, because I had lost some of the contrast there. Uh, like I say in a lot of my streams, you know, once you start adding in these darker colors and you start adding in the heavier backgrounds or more pinks or greens or yellows, um, that really spray tanny look that the character has at the beginning when you shade the character in first with their skin tones, it starts to kind of pale out. So it's always important to kind of take a step back when you're working on it and look and say, okay, did the skin tones still look striking? Do they look correct? Do they look balanced? Does it look like she's a part of her atmosphere? And that's a big thing that I've been trying to focus on this year is making the character look like they're in their atmosphere. And the way that you can do that is by incorporating colors from the background and from the lighting in the scene or any other objects around them if they're reflective. Incorporating those um, tones and hues into the character's clothing or anything else that would be reflective on the character. So highlights might be, you know, a slightly different color instead of just white or a lighter tone than, you know, the skin tone typically is. Here's where I'm taking the uh, Pigma Micron 1 pen and I'm darkening up some stuff. I realized that the bottom right corner was a little empty, so I go back over that. I add in a little bit more black, and I start going around her character and making sure that all of these lines are really thick and black so that she pops even more out of that background, just kind of setting her apart from it a little bit more. I also add a little bit of detail back into the skirt, adding black to just kind of thicken it up a little bit. And one of the things that I did not do was, um, you'll notice like on her leg that's extended out at the bottom, I didn't go over that. Um, I left that very light because that's where the light's hitting it the hardest. So I didn't want to darken that up too much. It would have looked funny. 
Well, thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate you taking the time um, to check me out on YouTube. You're always welcome to follow me on Facebook, um, Facebook forward slash bentostudios.com. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoy this, and this print will be available for purchase soon. Have a great day. Bye.